Hi all, welcome back to the lecture. I am Vinay Kumar. In the series of SKM32 F407 driver development, today I will implement this GPIO clock controller. Actually, in yesterday class, we declared this RCC register definition and we created a pointer RCC to point the base address of RCC. Okay. Now, by using this RCC register definition, we can enable or disable clock to any peripheral in SKM32 board. So now I'm going to implement this GPIO clock controller, which can enable or disable clocks to any GPIO port. So before implementing this one, first I should write what are the parameters I have to send to this function. In the function prototype, the first parameter should be the port address, okay, GPIO port address. That's why I'm writing GPIO reg, uh, wait, reg def underscore t star p gpio x here see you already know in previous classes this gpio register definition structure pointer this is a structure pointer remember this is the gpio register definition structure pointer this structure pointer can hold all the addresses of gpio ports so here i am sending the address of gpio port and then i have to send one more parameter which which can enable or disable the clock that is u int 8 underscore t enable or disable okay if this enable or disable parameter is one then it will enable clock to our gpio port if this enable or disable macro is zero then it will disable the clock to gpio port now let me implement the same function now i'm going to create one more c file in drivers for implementing that function a c file and i'm giving name as gpio drivers dot c okay and paste here okay here see first you have to check whether this is enable or disable if it is enable you have to enable the clock if it is disable you have to disable the clock now i'm checking whether enable or disable equals to enable Okay, here I already declared this enable macro. Okay, I think I didn't declare. Wait, let me check here. Yes, I already declared this uh, enable macro, but it is not uh, getting there because I didn't include that function. Here, I need to include that file. Wait, let me include that uh, stm32 device specific file. stm32f407xx.h. Yes, now let me open this one. Yes, uh, now also I'm not getting, wait. Okay, let me open this one. Okay, if it is equal to enable, then we have to enable GPIO port. Now, after it is enabled, you need to check to which port you want to supply the clock, to which port you want to supply the clock. So, here I'm checking the port address. Here the port address is pgpo x. So I am checking whether pgpo x is equals to gpo a or not. Okay. If it is gpo a, then I have to enable gpo a port. Else, else if pgpo x equals to gpo b, then I have to enable gpo b. Similarly, for other ports, let me copy this thing and let me paste right here okay and let me change these things that is gpio c gpio d uh, right here gpio e gpio f z h and i okay these are the gpio ports now i'm going to implement one more function within this uh, if else ladder where I can actually enable the GPIO port. Here I'm uh, creating one function named GPIO A clock enable. Okay. Here when the function is called, this function will enable the clock to GPIO A. Okay. Now similarly, I'm going to write the same function for other things also. Here let me change the name as GPIO uh, wait GPIO B, and here. Let me write the same thing here also. 
let me paste everything here and I will change the names after pasting everything. Okay. Okay. Now AB is completed. Come here, it is C and it is uh, D, CPO D, E and here is F. It is G. This one is H. The last one is I. Now, I need to implement these functions. Okay. Actually, these are some functions which are needed to every peripheral. Okay. If you want to implement some SPI, you want also, there also you need to use the CPIO functions. Okay. That's why I'm going to write this function definitions in STM32F407, a device specific header file. Okay. Now I'm going to define these functions as a macro. So, first, let me define the first function that is ZPIO A clock enabled. Now, see how to enable the clock to ZPIO A. For, for knowing that one, you have to open reference manual. And in this reference manual, go to reset and clock controller. Here, open re RCC registers and go down. And uh, here, see the register map. Let me click this one. And here, observe. Here, observe. See. Here, ZPIO A clock enable, ZPIO B clock enable, and uh, two ZPIO I clock enables are there. If you want to enable the clocks to ZPIO A, you have to set one here. Okay. What is this resistor? Check here. AHB1 ENR. Okay. If you if you set the zeroth bit of AHB1 ENR, then it will enable clock to ZPIO A. If you set first bit of ZPIO, uh, I mean AHB1 ENR, then it will set ZPIO B enable. Okay. Now, let me implement this one in our project. Okay. For that, I already created RCC. And what is that register? HB1 ENR. Now, I need to set the first bit. If you want to set a bit, you have to do R operation. That's why I'm writing here R operation. And here I need to set the first bit. So, I'm shifting 1 uh, for 0 times. Then the particular one will go and place at the uh, 0th bit position. Now, see, this particular core can enable clock to GPIOA because here in RCC, I am enabling the HP1 ENR register at 0th position. Okay, that is 0th position. I am writing 1. I already showed you at 0th position is nothing but GPIOA. Similarly, for other things, let me uh, copy this function. And uh, let me paste here for other things. And let me change the names ZPIO B, ZPIO C, ZPIO D, ZPIO E, EF, and uh, Z, H, and I. Here, see, if you want to enable ZPIO B clock, then you have to shift one for one time. And if you want to enable ZPIO C, you have to shift for two times. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, that's it. Here, see, whenever these functions are called, it will enable the corresponding bit in the HB1 or HB1 ENR register and that will make uh, enables to, uh, that will make clock enables to that particular port. Okay, this is how we can enable clock to ZPIO ports. Now, how to disable the clock? For that also, I am going to configure right here. Okay, up to here, clock enable macros. And now, let me write else here. We'll see. If PZPIO equals to disable, if it is equal to disable, then we have to disable the clock. Now, let me copy everything. Everything up to here and reach to here and paste right here okay now instead of enabling i have to disable i have to write functions for disabling the macro okay here also di disable and here also di di here di indicates disabling di DI, DI, the last one also, DI. 
okay now let me implement this functions too right here only here okay hash define gpua clock disable if you want to disable the clock for gpua simply we have to reset the zeroth bit okay reset the zeroth bit so let me copy the same thing same thing and paste right here right here and instead of simply doing our operation you have to do here complement okay you have to do complement which means here you are resetting the zeroth bit okay here you are setting the zeroth bit here you are resetting the zeroth bit and now let me write the same thing for other gpo ports gpo b c d e f z h i and let me change the names gpo b c d e f z h h and i and uh, here also i need to change these things that is 1 2 and 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay and let me write a comment here clock enable and disable macros switch for gpio ports okay it's good practice to write comments for everything and this is how we can enable or disable the macros not macros uh, gpio ports okay here if you call this function it will enable clock to gpio port if you call this disable function it will disable clock to gpio ports in my next video i will build this file and i will show some modifications in the project thank you thank you for watching this video and if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section if you are new to our channel please consider subscribe and like this video